All right, so in React, if you're using ES6 class components, there's a couple of ways that you can bind your click listeners to the this keyword. And I'm going to kind of show you through this. So let me just show you the example that a lot of people have probably seen. So here is the traditional approach that I've seen a lot where basically in the constructor, you take whatever method that you're using and you bind it to the this keyword, right? The whole reason you're doing this is because if you don't do this, you won't have access to this when this method is invoked. And I'll show you that in just a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'll walk you through four different approaches that you can use to kind of set up your event listeners on your React ES6 class components. So let's just kind of walk through this. So approach A, if I click this, it basically prints out a console log and then also prints something out from state. So let's look at approach A here. You can see this is just an ES6 class component where it extends a React component. And when you do that, you need to have a constructor that calls super, pretty straightforward. And then also I'm just setting some state on that component, right? I'm setting name equal to Rick. And then later on, I'm rendering out a button, which is going to basically call this handle click method when you click on it, right? So that should hopefully all make sense. You've probably seen ES6 class components before. And even if you work with functional components, I think it's still necessary to learn this because you don't know if you're gonna get onto a project that has maybe older React code where they have hundreds of ES6 class components that you need to understand. So looking at this approach, what this is doing is basically it's binding this method to the this context of the class. All right, so if you don't have this, if I just try to invoke this directly, it's going to crash when I try to click on approach A. And the reason it crashes is because this is not even defined, All right? If I go back and I were to print out like console.log of this, you'll see that it actually prints out undefined when I click on approach A, All right? So if you don't understand that, um, you need to go back and kind of read up on how JavaScript works, how scoping works, what the this keyword actually refers to. But I think what happens is that this is going to render out and then later on in the JavaScript runtime, when you click on something, it's going to basically have the handle click method have a different this context than what you want. And typically what you want is you want this to refer to your actual ES6 class object so that you can you know, access the state or call some other methods. So this is one approach and there are some performance downsides to this where you have to keep on calling bind every time this component renders. Um, I don't know how big of a performance issue it is, but this is one approach that you can do if you wanted to basically be able to access this inside your class component. So let's move on to class B. Class B is something that I see all the time. This is, I think, the approach that I would typically take where whenever you have a method that needs to access state or this, inside the constructor, you basically run this line. So this is taking your method here and it's kind of changing what the this keyword will refer to when you invoke it. So we're saying take the handler and bind to this class object. And then whenever this method gets invoked from the DOM, it's going to have reference to this dot state. So this one makes sense. Um, I, I think this is the one I've seen the most in tutorials and blog posts and stuff like that. And you can see here, if you click on this, it prints out Morty. So you can see that this is working fine. Let's move on to approach C. Approach C is a little bit different. Basically, you don't need to do any binding. You could just do anonymous fat arrow functions because if you know how a JavaScript works with fat arrow functions, basically the this keyword is going to refer to whatever scope that the fat arrow was defined in. So in this case, this fat arrow was defined in this class uh, ES6 class object or constructor, which means that this is going to refer to the same this that's here with your state. This approach seems pretty nice. I don't know if there's any performance issues with this approach, but honestly, this is the safest thing to do because there's so many times when I'm writing React code and I call something like this and I break my entire application. I spend 30 minutes trying to figure out why it's not working. And like, if you notice when I refresh the page, this is printing out right when the application mounts. Now the issue is because this is executing right when render happens, right? And now instead you want to actually have that be an anonymous function so that you're actually passing a callback. 
I have been tripped up on this so many times where I'm accidentally calling a function and I end up spending so much time trying to figure out what's going on. So I would recommend that you just always pass an anonymous function to any of your callback listeners. Whatever the other events are on click, I, I mean on hover, whatever, just make sure you just pass an anonymous function. I like this approach. If I did um, ES6 class React components, I would probably go with this approach just so you don't have to write all that extra boilerplate bind stuff because there's times that you might forget to write this and then you're going over here and you're trying to use this app and it's just not working and you don't know why and you waste time trying to figure that out. I personally would set up like an ES lint rule to make sure that you always have anonymous functions passed in. Again, this might not be the most performant, but honestly, who cares? Uh, and then the a last approach, let's look at approach D. So approach D is kind of cool. You can actually define your methods using the fat arrow so that the, this is bound to the actual like context of your object. And then you don't have to worry about doing bind or anything like that. I think the only issue with this approach is if you start getting into like inheritance and having this component be extended by other child children component, you can't like overwrite this method or you can't say like this dot handle click in the child component because this dot handle click won't be defined. Um, it doesn't like, I don't know how to really explain it, but your child component won't inherit this method because this isn't an actual like class method. This is some other type of method. So if you needed some type of inheritance, you'd have to go back with like one of these approaches. So with all that being said, I would just probably go with this approach. This is my favorite approach because it has the least amount of boilerplate. You don't have to worry about doing this bind stuff. You don't have to worry about binding over here. Anytime you, I see the bind keyword, I kind of cringe because it's like, it's just lower level JavaScript stuff that you shouldn't have to worry about in a library or a framework, especially one that's being used in 2021. So I would just go with this approach and this approach is kind of hacky too, because now you have like methods that you have some of, some of them are fat arrows, some of them are normal methods and you're kind of mixing and matching. So I personally like approach C, but use your own discretion to pick whichever one you like. They all do the same thing, but I just kind of wanted to share this with you all so that you can understand how you can kind of bind the this keyword differently in your ES6 class React components. All right, if you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up. Also leave a comment below if you have a different approach or like what approach you enjoy using best. And then like always, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more about React in the future because I should be hopefully publishing a lot more React videos for you all to learn a thing or two. All right, have a good day.